Hello everyone. Now in this session, I will explain question number 3 and 4 of exercise 5.5. So let's see what is there in question number 3. So we have, there are two set squares in your box. So in your geometry box, you will find that there are two set squares in there. So now what they are asking, what are the measures of the angles that are formed at their corners? Fine. So. Um, for this question i will give you the answer fine and later on you can measure it at home okay it's uh, it's a very it's a constant value for uh, each set squares so the answer would be i would like to give you the answer for this so the first set square you can take a, you will find that one set square is like a little bit bigger sign like this okay and another one would be a little bit like this just a moment it will look like this okay so in both the cases what would be the measure of the each corners this is what they are asking okay now let's do it yes now the measure of the angles for number a okay the measure of angles in one set square are 30 degree in this I am trying to say 60 degree and in some cases and the final one is 90 degree fine what about another one so the other so other set square other set square the measure of angles the measure of angles is equals to what 45 degree 45 degree and 90 degree Okay, so these are the uh, required measures of both the you know, set squares. Now, what is the final question they have asked? Do they have any angle measure that in common? Yes, they both have 90 degree, isn't it? So, what we will write? Yes, yes, the angle measure, the angle measure 90 degree. 90 degree is common is common between them is common between them so this is a required solution of question number 3 students now let's move on to sum number 4 so here is a figure given so once the figure is given in question number 4 and some uh, questions been asked uh, regarding this uh, figure so we have to answer this so see what is there in the figure given a has 1 b 2 c 3 d 4 e 5 we have one point p also here f 6 g 7 and h is 8 okay so the, the total length of this horizontal line is 8 centimeter and uh, it is from um, mark Five that there is one perpendicular being drawn. This is a perpendicular line, ninety degree. Okay. Now you have to answer all these questions. Is CE is equals to EG or not? Okay. So now we have to see CE. What is CE? CE and EG. Now we have to see the distance between CE. How many distance? One, two. From C to E, we have two distance. That is one and two. And from E to G, how many distance we have? 1, 2. So, both are sharing. These are all equal length. Okay. These are all equal length. So, the distance from here to here and here to here would be 2 centimeter. And from E to G, the distance from E to G would be from here to here 1, from here to here another 1. So, again 2 centimeter. So, yes. So, they are equal. So, yes. We will write yes. Uh, yes. We will write yes here. Okay. 
Now, number B, does PE bisect CG? PE, where is PE? PE bisect CG. Now, what is the total length of CG? You see, from here to here, we have 2 centimeter and from E to G also, we have 2 centimeter. So, definitely, we can say that PE bisect CG because the total length of CG is what? 4 centimeter and the midpoint PE is a midpoint of CG and that is the reason on the left hand side also we have 2 centimeter on the right hand side also we have 2 centimeter. So, we can say yes PE bisect CG. So, in this case also we will say yes. Yes. Now, number C. What is there in number C? Identify any two lines segment for which PE is a perpendicular bisector. Okay. So, two line segments we have to see. So, that means what are the two line segments perpendicular bisector? One you can say uh, CG because CG uh, if we consider C and G, PE is a perpendicular bisector because uh, PE is bisecting CG. So, one you can write CG. Okay. Now, in the same way, in the same way, we have to find out another one that is B and H. What about B and H? Now, see what is the total length from B to E? 1, 2, 3. So, from here to here, we have 3 centimeter and from E to H, from E to H, again we have 3 centimeter, you see. So, we can say that E is a midpoint of B and H, isn't it? So, we can say that B H for B H also P E is acting as a perpendicular bisector. Okay? So, these are the two required line segments you can answer. Now, let us move on to the second part of the question. This question number 4. Are this true? Are this true? Now, you have to say are this true? So, what we have to say? Just a minute. So, A C is greater than F G. Now, A C is greater than F G. Now, what is the total length of A C? Total length of A C is what? From here to here. 1, 2, 2 centimeter. Fine. And F G is what? Only 1 centimeter. So, yes, it is right. So, you will say true. It is true. C D is equals to G H. C D. Where is C D? C D is only 1 centimeter and G H is also 1 centimeter. So, we can say yes, it is true. And what is the final question? B C is less than E H. That means B C would be greater in this case. So, let us see B C and E H. What is B C? 1. And what is E H? Oh my God. It is 1, 2, 3, 3 centimeter. So, E H is greater. B C is smaller. So, this statement is wrong, is not it? B C is less than E H? Yes, yes, definitely yes. So, it is it is true. B C is 1 centimeter and E H is 3 centimeter. So, we can say B C is less than E H. So, it is also true students. Fine. So, that is it for today's session. I hope all of you have understood uh, whatever I have explained today. So, thank you so much for joining. God bless you all.